Welcome to The Spirit of Revolution by Roger Hallam. Roger is currently serving a five-year sentence in prison for taking proportionate action on the climate crisis. He is recording these podcasts down the prison phone line. Spirit of Revolution introduces the big questions of life. For example, how will humanity face the challenges of the next few decades? The odds seem impossible, yet history shows us that when everything seems lost, people find a way. The key? Spirit. A hidden force that the powerful overlook, but that drives revolutions and shapes new worlds. This podcast is your guide to harnessing that spirit, fueling the movements that will change our future. The revolution starts now. Are you ready? This call is from a person currently in a prison in England. All calls are logged and recorded and may be listened to by a member of prison staff. I wasn't expecting it, but I found myself facing four years in prison two days before writing this. I didn't know whether I was to be found guilty or not guilty. I was taken upstairs from the court cells with my co-defendants. We were all charged with conspiracy to cause a public nuisance without reasonable excuse in a London trial. We had all held a Zoom call in 2022 to invite people to join actions to climb onto bridges over the main motorway circling the city, the M25. The aim was to stop traffic day after day, to force the government to stop new oil and gas licences. Continuing issuing these licences would contribute to the world going over two degrees centigrade. A billion refugees and the worst episode of suffering in human history. What the UN has said is we have two years to, quote, save the world. We had been systematically stopped from talking about the objective physical evidence of this crime by the judge, what he called, quote, climate change. We had refused to be stopped from telling the truth. And so the judge had us dragged out of the court by the police and put in prison. And so now the five of us were sitting behind the glass waiting for the jury to come in. I was watching myself. I was not sure how I would react. Sometimes I react well in such circumstances, the big moments of life, but sometimes not, particularly when I was younger. We were told to stand up. The jury foreperson was asked to give their verdict. I was the first person on the list. For a moment, I felt like I might faint. Then I forced myself to look at the symbol of the state behind the judge. I made myself think, this is the state. I am protecting the state from destruction. I can do not otherwise, something like that. I had the sensation of comfort, being part of something bigger than myself. Guilty. The jury person said the word, a short word, but it means so much, four years or five years, as it turned out, to be put in prison. I felt numb. I sat down looking ahead. I was focused, but not forcing myself. Somewhere inside me, there was a ripple of panic. But most of my being was calm. There were no words going through my mind, or if there were words, it would have been something like, what will be, will be. I felt a certain peace. The other defendants were also found guilty. We were all told to sit down. The judge then started talking. It was a lot of nonsense, as he'd been saying throughout the trial. One of my co-defendants stood up to say it was outrageous. He shouted at her to sit down. I didn't really listen. There were other things going through my mind. Or maybe there was, in a sense, nothing going through my mind. I was just watching myself. As we left court and were taken down to the cells, Some of the other defendants were in tears. We all hugged each other. I still felt calm. Again, I wasn't forcing myself. But neither did it just occur. It was a sort of strange fusion of grace and will. I was taken back to my cell. I had no expectations this mood would last. But it did. 
I am proud of what I did. I was doing what you need to do when circumstances turn out the way they have, when everything is in balance, when humanity faces its final emergency. Two days later, and I'm still okay, though early this morning, I started feeling self-pity and bitter. What the fuck? But it didn't last. No doubt I could feel like that again. Maybe I will collapse into a nervous breakdown. Nothing is for certain. There is only the certainty of the present moment. So what was going on here? Who was the real Roger Hallam? The one in panic? Or the one feeling in peace? Was the real Roger Hallam the one feeling stuff? Or was Roger Hallam watching me feel stuff? Did I have the agency or the will to change myself? Or was it that this Roger Hallam was forcing himself upon me? Or was it in some sense a combination of all these things? And what about the world around me at this time? The court, the cells, the lightly sentence. Were these set things? They are what they are? But if so, how come they can feel so different? Peace or bitterness? A set thing can actually be a lot of things. Once you actually look, properly look, the self and the world are ambiguous. You can't actually seem to get to the bottom of them. What this podcast is not about is resolving these questions, but rather finding meaning through not being afraid, having the courage to ask the questions, what I would call a pluralism of ways of seeing. And as I hope to show, the revolution we need to save ourselves in the coming years requires us to see the world as filled with spirit, a sense which is intangible, but no less real for being so. This podcast investigates this spirit, the spirit of revolution. Thanks for listening to Spirit of the Revolution. The full transcript of this episode and more of Roger's writings are available at rogerhallam.com. Please sign up there to give a donation every month to support this project. Calls from prison aren't cheap, and there's a whole team of us supporting Roger through this process. We're in this revolution together, so please chip in. Tune in next week for a new episode. See you then.